Hey Libra, it's Empress Rose here. Welcome to your reading. We're just going to get started here with the overall vibe for the reading. Oh, wow. Okay. Eight of Wands. Uh, if you have any Leo placements, go ahead and head over, over to there to uh, watch the that one because we had the same overall open gentle communication there's nothing too harsh it's it's hmm there might be things going in two different directions it's communication that makes things happen that makes things move that changes things changes where you're at in reality it's very open there might be a lot of it there might be a lot of going back and forth here but Eight of Wands, a lot of communication that does change things in reality. So I did want to say that over on Vimeo, we are doing, um, I've added in some I Ching readings for the extended and I'm having such a good time with them. So if you want to join me over there, the link will be in the description box below. And I'll also put a little excerpt of what we find over there or a little, little blurb there. So you can see if you, if that's something you're interested in. Okay. So let's go on to the rest of the reading past, present, inner landscape, what's at issue, environment, to-do list, possible outcome. Okay. Well, we have Virgo and Leo showing up here. This is kind of wild. This is wild. I think we're having, I think we're having like the love readings that we missed last time where nothing was happening. I don't know, a bunch of people, Leo in, in particular, and then Virgo seemed associated with that. So let's see. Um, here we had the Fool card in the recent past. This is like the funniest Fool card of all of my decks because here she is going to certain death. We have an alligator. His mouth is open. That's the only place this path leads, right to the open at mouth of the alligator. So um, what maybe you did receive the call, right? Our Fool thing is all, our Fool card is all about sort of receiving this call. Uh, this bird comes in. Ooh, this is throat chakra here too, coming in and really igniting some sort of passion of the heart um, here. And yeah, the heart wanted to go on this trip. Um, something begun and began, and um, you wanted to you wanted to go on this trip, and and it was a passion of the heart here. But you know what? So I have to say about this fool card here, the, the perhaps it's a friendly alligator, but you went willingly. Uh, you had you were very inspired and very excited, and maybe didn't think it through all the way, or didn't you know the the fool is the the fool, right? Um, it's not the magician who's like organized and planned and has uh, you know if this what that and spreadsheets and everything like that. This is the fool. This is like you know what I want. I want to go here and then you just go right you don't really make a list or think about ramifications and what happens if this happens and and you know contingency plans and all that no that was not where you were at you were at like this sounds like fun let's go oh but this journey <laughs> i like how she's like holding the mouth here of this lion because this one's open in here you're like oh boy please do not bite me so it's the strength card it's it's uh you haven't quit on anything you're not giving up on anything but is it hard yes i mean i feel like this lion really wants to eat her up for lunch um but it's it knows it can't so it's refraining so there's a, a restraint has been involved patience has been involved taming that inner beast so maybe at one point you were like "Woo." let's go and now maybe you learned your lesson and you were like this is hard and you got you you got into a spot that is really difficult um so here you were like ah my heart says go let us go i trust my heart here and here you're like wow this is like super painful and difficult and i hate this and uh make this stop and nobody's having a tremendously good time um, but there is a lot of patience and a lot of strength maybe you've it almost seems like you have kept something from devouring you i want to say good boundaries i want to say that maybe you didn't realize you were going to need these good boundaries out at the beginning but by the time you get to the dangerous part to the mouth to the thing that could have devoured you you have somehow tamed this beast and made it so that um so that you do not it's kind of interesting because it's like you're not allowing yourself to be 
destroyed by this experience. Like, yeah, maybe you, you went on an adventure, it was very exciting, but there came a point or there came a part in this adventure where it was like, and now you will be eaten alive or now you will be destroyed or now you will be absorbed into some other entity, some other thing, maybe a company or maybe a boss like energy or something like that. Maybe you just like, oh, this job looks good. I'll take it. And then it's actually required quite a bit of restraint and strength for you to not be completely devoured by the situation. So, um, so yeah, I, I think, you know, this strength card here means to me a little bit that you've, a little bit, that you've learned your lesson. I think you've actually learned quite a bit about yourself, quite a bit about why you made this decision to go down this path, why you wanted to do this thing. I think we've got um, an understanding, this, this situation has required so much strength and so much restraint. And I think you've learned a lot about your own power and who you are and who you can be. I think you've learned quite a bit here with, um, with all of the self-control uh, this has required um, to possibly not be de eaten and devoured by this adventure and completely absorbed into it um, or vice versa, like devouring something else. Or, or, but I think you've somehow figured out how to not like there's a sense of fight and that's what boundaries are knowing who you are knowing who this lion is and it may not be a person it may be um whatever makes you decide to go do these rash things or whatever um so you've learned a lot about each other you now know the lion knows that you can be hurt and you know um, how to keep that lion from hurting you. And I think you know this has a lot of solar plexus energy to it. Um, and I think you know a lot more about yourself and, and the boundaries here. Where do you, where, you know, who you are in the situation and also what you're capable of. So you are currently exerting a lot of self-control, a lot of strength, a lot of inner strength and, and inner power to maintain sort of who you are, maybe even a boundary here, or maybe even uh, just not, um, not allowing something to overwhelm you. And so this is really cool because when you leave a situation like that, um, the strength that you have and your, it's not just the strength that you have because you always had this power, this strength here. It's that you know you have the strength is what's power, what becomes powerful about these difficult situations is that you know that you can do this. You know that you can tame this lion and having that knowledge and information about yourself is um, powerful. That is, uh, that just feeds into the strength that becomes like an exponential strengthening process here. So, um, in your hopes, your fears, your inner landscape, hermit card. Well, that's really funny because the hermit, that's the Virgo energy, which we already have some sitting in here too. Um, but the hermit card also, so you could be thinking about someone who has some strong Virgo in their chart, or you could be, um, it is like the most, it is one of the most, there's actually all this internal stuff. This whole top shelf here is like internal work, top shelf internal work here. So, um, but the hermit card is looking to your own north star this would again be knowing who you are and knowing your boundaries and knowing who you are and the difference between who you are and what other people say you are what other people want you to be and having that really good boundary right they're close but he can't just do whatever he wants this lion he or she i don't know why are lion well it's a he i was like why am i assuming it's a he because it's got a mane wearing the the he regalia the he fur <laughs> and then we have the hermit here so your inner landscape you could be thinking about being single you could be thinking about what your own intuition is saying about what to do next and you've got a really good handle on it so far with the strength card it may be difficult to be in touch with that intuition given some sort of external circumstance that you kind of dove into um, without thinking very much without realizing there was these big jaws at the end of it but this hermit card here is thinking about what do you want? What do you need? What, who are you and your next step? So looking to your own North star for the next steps to your journey. You could also be thinking um, about 
um, being single, being solo. You could be, I mean, because of this two of cups that shows up later. Oh, that's nice. Um, because of this two of cups that shows up later, uh, you could really be thinking about being single, but there is a sense where you've gone through a whole process to find out who you are and maintain that. Um, so in the hermit card just feels like it's building into this strength here about like who you are. I think I basically already covered the hermit card in the strength card. So um, what's the issue here is judgment reverse bad judgment possibly with this, 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 this in particular, this fool card, not every fool card, but this one looks like some bad judgment. Um, could be rethinking judgment. Could be not getting any insight on what happened, not knowing what happened, right? Because judgment is like, you turn in, like the sun card is like, you turn in your paper and then judgment is like, and then it comes back and it's got all these marks on it. And then after judgment, we have the world card, class is over and you never have to do that class again. So even if you wanted to redo the assignment, you can't. So, um, so but judgment in reverse might actually be not just an evaluation, but it could be an ability to redo the assignment, getting an extension on something. Just thinking about where judgment sits in the Kabbalah here, which is right here. This is judgment sitting there, right at the end, heading right into the, the very end here. Um, so something not, not, not getting the final insight this could be delayed grades. This could be delayed. Um, this could be delayed judgment, something that hasn't happened or hasn't. You don't have information. You don't have the feedback because that's basically what judgment is, is like feedback from the universe or even from your higher self about what went wrong here. What did I do? What would I do differently next time? If I could redo the assignment, what would I do? But that's not happening. You're not either not you're either getting a chance to redo an assignment or you're not really understanding, like it's like you got the grade back, but you don't understand like why it is what it is. Like you got an A and you're not, you're like, I did not put A effort into that. I was just like, get it done and get me out of here. So why, but you don't understand. So there's something here that you don't understand. You're not getting clarity on. Someone hasn't told you what, is going on i think it could either be that the situation is not over and complete and also you don't understand something there's not been like a communication there's not been like the judgment card is like the post-mortem at when you know if you're working for like a i don't know some some sort of group that does like a big like auction or something like that and then you have the post-mortem after where everyone talks about like what went well what didn't go well and then hopefully somebody writes it down so that next year when you do the same event you have like the institutional memory to remember what went well and what didn't work and what did work so um but it's like there was no post-mortem there was no follow-up here so in your environment though you have ace of cups a new relationship, a new beginning, a new connection, a reconnection with something from the past. It sits right underneath this fool card. So it could relate to something you jumped into at some point. Um, but here, here it is now. And instead of, so it looks like you, it almost looks like the jaws, the way this is sitting and the way the jaws, the, the mouth, the devourer, has been um, talked about here. This almost seems like once you go past this sort of gatekeeper devouring thing, you, this is where you're actually headed. This is where you wanted to go all along was right here, this Ace of Cups. But you didn't really, like you thought this went like, do, 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 plop right into this beautiful ace of this beautiful cup full of butterflies and love and joy, not realizing that you were going to have to pass through. This is starting to sound like um, some some fairy tale. <laughs> like uh, these are very fairy tale looking cards, though. Not realizing that you're going to have to pass through some sort of difficult jaws situation. So um, so you have been through the jaws, or you are currently in the jaws situation, and you are holding steady and learning a lot about yourself in the process. Uh, so, but here in your environment, there is like 
something new opens, it blossoms. It could be, um, well, it's a cup. So we're talking about it's very emotional. It could be a relationship. It's very emotional. There's an opening, there's excitement. And we have like a cup full of butterflies. This just seems like that excitement and anticipation, what you were anticipating maybe at the beginning could possibly be here or I mean, it's a possibility. There's something here in the, in the, there's an opening, there's an ace here in your environment. So maybe something's opening up and I don't think it's jaws. Well, that mouth, right? The mouth can open up for, I want to say, right, the, there were, I, I used to be like a folk tale teller at different festivals and stuff. And there was this one folk tale, the Chenu. Anyway, um, it like, at one point, the little girl that the Chenu is like dealing with can't tell whether he's smiling or about to eat her up, right? Because the mouth is making this like, and is it like, I'm going to eat you? Or is it like, oh, I love you. So, um, so that's a little bit about what I'm seeing here is this mouth open to devour, but now it's, there's, a, there's this, I almost see this cup, like this mouth that's opening up. And especially with, since we have this opening up, all of this opening here, opening up with, um, with emotion. It's not just uh, a visceral hunger. It's not just some body hunger. There's emotion here and it's opening and it's coming in and it's, exciting and then here this is this is your to-do list i do think these are the love readings that were trying, that we didn't get last time in some ways because the two of cups there's no other way to read an ace of cups and a two of cups i mean there could be let's see there could be let's try something you're really excited about in your environment and you connect with it but this two of cups is you're connecting if there is an opening up of a conversation, you're taking that opening and you're going with it. Um, that is your to-do list. Um, I don't see you forcing it open. In fact, you may have been trying to hold it at bay, um, but there is connection here now. There is an interwoven uh, back and forth, a um, connection with something that you resonate with and you are very, you're resonating with. And maybe some sort of explanation um, that's been missing comes in. Uh, but there is like connection. Now, whether this is like forever connection or friendship, possibly connection, there is open communication and there is deep connection to someone that feels very similar to you. Could be like a soul sister, could be like, yeah, just a very, like a deep connection. Um, and you're not the same, but you're similar. And it could just be a moment. It could just be a conversation, this post-mortem at some point. But this Ace of Cups looks like, like it, we go from the Ace to the Two. It looks like we're on a thing. What happens here is some sort of burden it's dropped uh, so that you can pick up what you actually want. It's like if, so if this is just, if this is just, if this is a conversation that you've been patiently wanting or waiting for or trying to understand something, if this is a conversation, it like relieves you of some big burden. Like you understand now. Um, this person's willing to open up they're they're willing to open up here and they're almost excited and eager to open up maybe they've even seen you struggling with this strength here um to, to keep from being devoured by this or to keep your boundary i mean this too has a sense of they want to open up about who they are about something about their who they are it's like they know who they are in a way and they want to open up about it and so then you have this two of cups we go from ace of cups to two of cups i can't see cards that aren't here and these cards are here right they are here this this time so and then this relieves you of some kind of burden so ten of wands is like a difficult journey is over the difficult part of the journey or some some sort of burden that you've been carrying gets dropped 
And there's also, there's always a sense the Ten of Wands is always about shoulds, like dropping the shoulds. We don't need to carry what we should have done or what should have happened or whatever. That would have come in with this, as this could have come in with some shoulds if it was in the upright, but there weren't any shoulds. But whatever sort of psychic burden or I want to say um, energetic burden or energetic heaviness, it's, it's, it's relieved. It's done with. We don't have to do this anymore. Yeah, there's like some communication here that like relieves you of a of some sort of sorrow or difficulty or burden here. Um, and whether this relationship continues on beyond this conversation, um, you know, that's for future readings to tell us. And also, you know, nothing lasts forever. Eventually somebody dies, right? Even in the best case scenario. So um so, but this Ten of Wands, this burden that you maybe have carried for a long time, maybe you felt a lot of guilt or maybe you felt a lot of confusion or whatever sort of energetic energy that you've been carrying, it's no longer yours to carry and there's a drop off point here. Um, and there's something about this conversation that allows you to let go of something or relieve yourself. Uh, and you, you know, maybe you were trying to be kind, maybe some sort of obligation you could be being released of an obligation or released of something that was not yours to ever carry anyway and this 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 now allows you for a new beginning there's a new beginning like if this if this relationship continues past this conversation there's a whole new beginning without the burdens of the past the burdens of the past will be dropped and then now this can be what you want and what's healthy for you and what's good for you and something that you actually choose rather than you having an obligation to go along with or something like that. Or it could be just sort of some sort of closure from someone you were very, I don't know though, this Ace of Cups is a new beginning. So, so the relationship is renewed and whatever is in the past is in the past. It's, you may not even end up discussing the past. You may just end up connecting with a person Forget the past, let's just go with the new, let's just start over right now. So, very beautiful reading, really. And it could be, it could really be any kind of relationship where, well, hopefully all your relationships involve some amount of affection and, and respect, but this, there is a soul connection here. What, okay, that seems good. Okay, we got these two puppies. Elephant spirit, learn from the past. This is beautiful. I think this is what you have been doing. You have been learning from this past. You have been learning about maybe some decisions that you made or some things that were a little rash or a little not very thoroughly thought out or, or you're just learning about yourself and some of the past decisions you made. Um, elephant spirit, learning from the past. They have incredible memories. But there's something about the burden of memory. I, um, long ago, I had an accident where there was some, uh, a lot of amnesia. And, um, and it was actually really cool to like, hmm? uh, you did me wrong, I don't, I don't remember. Like, just the burden of memory and the burden of, of having to remember how people, or, or just whether you want to or not, remembering how people treated you or remembering certain incidences in your life. It was lovely to be relieved of that burden. And honestly, I also got to reread the entire David Sedaris canon as if I had never read it before. And it was just so wonderful <laughs> to get double the pleasure. It was so cool. So um, learning from the past. So there is something here, though, that you can't, I was just, you know, remembering with fondness the ability to not remember things but this is almost like a choice this is like this could be forgiveness coming in here um letting go of the past but we're learning from the past and then we can let it go because right now you're you're definitely learning something a uh, lizard spirit dream the world into being i think this is a lot about like what you want envisioning what you want this is like there's some effortlessness here. We're not like hard working the world into being right now. There's a there's a time for that, but there's also a time for just dreaming and envisioning the possibilities. And this is this dreaming and this envisioning is actually incredibly powerful right now. 
So I like how we have the past and the future here. We have the past and then we have the, the future dreaming the world into existence. And maybe there will be something that you've seen or something that you've envisioned coming into to play here. All right, if you want to join me over on Vimeo, I've got the description. I oh, don't know, I've got the link in the description box. Um, otherwise, we'll chat again later.